Good morning, this is Laura with Papori of Life. Hope you're having a great day. It's Friday before the long weekend. It should be a nice weekend for all. Hopefully the weather stays with it. Right now the temps are getting up a little past 80 and should get up to 90, so it's going to be a hot day. So I have to work in the kitchen with um, the produce that I brought home yesterday, but I have to also get out in the garden, so I think during the worst of the heat, I am going to work in the kitchen. <laughs> but right now I'm outside because in the gazebo there's a beautiful breeze. So I want to share with you a little bit about daylilies. They are a beautiful, beautiful flower. But did you know that they're edible? Well, let me tell you a few things. But before I do, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. So what I want to share with you is I typed up some notes that might be helpful because I find that they keep me kind of focused. So there are a lot of benefits and I've been eating daylilies ah, for four or five years now. I don't eat them in mass production, not at all. But right now they come out and did you know that daylilies come out once and then they close up and kind of die. So every night I harvest all the flowers that came out during the day. And this is some of the ones that I've done. And why do I do that? I do that so that I can powder them and put them in smoothies throughout the year. And no, I don't consume them every single day. But there's a lot of benefits. And so what I do is like today I have a salad and I'm starving this morning. So what I'll do is I will take the petals off. Now you can eat the whole flower, but I generally eat just the flower, the leaves. Excuse me, the petals. And what they do, it's a sweet flavor. It has a little bit of a lettuce flavor to it. So now I would not make a full salad with that you know with um four or five flowers because like everything too much of a good thing can be bad for you we're not going to deny that so now my salad looks like this and in it our lettuce is from my garden i picked up some spinach because my spinach is not it's not producing this year so i'm going to have to try it again picked up some spinach, I threw in some berries that I picked up, and some celery, so it will be delightful, and now I have that. And the reason I wanted to come in and share is because these daylilies are only here for a short time. My daylilies have like four to six different um, flowers ready to blossom. You can eat these, you can actually fry them, you can fry these little guys, but what they do recommend is that you boil them first, you know, for a few minutes, and then put them in a stir fry, and you get some nutritional benefits from that. Now, there are a variety of things, so I'm going to share some things that I know. First, it, they help to detoxify your entire body system. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, they don't grow all year round. And I don't know of any people who have red urine, but it can reduce those effects. Lessons hemorrhoids, if you experience those. I did a long time ago. Those are horrible. Consumption of daylily in, prop in proportionate amounts cures insomnia. So if you're having trouble sleeping, maybe have a salad midday to later in the evening. I tend to do my salads in the late morning, early afternoon. And it reduces jaundice symptoms. Now, most adults don't have that, as long as you're getting a lot of your nutrients. And um, we know that it's the liver that causes that jaundice, and that's why we keep, um, keep a watch on the children when they come through and they're yellow and they do those jaundice counts and stuff. So we all want to have good numbers when that. Now, um, I'm not going to go into how to plant them. Most people have them naturally there. You can go onto the roots and um, split, 
split the roots and put them in other soil and you want a loose soil when you do that and then you kind of give it nutrients and I'm not talking about buying buying a bunch of nutrients I'm talking about make sure you have some compost material water it water it until it gets a nice um, strong base to it and then you just leave it alone mine have been here we've been in this house for hmm, 40 years or more and they've been here and they just keep expanding and so I've tried pulling them out but so the roots start growing from the crown point of the flower and they're brownish in color roots can also be used but I don't personally consume them so let me tell you a few things um, okay, okay. so there are some things to them they have some fat 0.4 grams they have 2 grams of protein 176 milligrams of phosphorus 87 grams of calcium 24 milligrams of sodium 1.2 milligrams of iron vitamin A 3000 IU vitamin C 88 milligrams thiamine 0.16 milligrams riboflavin 0.21 milligrams niacin 0.8 and potassium 170 those are great nutrients and like I said sadly they don't go all year but I also do not eat them for a long time like those dried flower petals and stuff I will put in a powder and I'll put them in a smoothie here and there um, my husband he has had the flowers and salad so I know that if I'm making like a meatloaf or a stir fry he's not gonna have a problem with me putting them in do your research though and please know not all lilies are edible day lilies are so as I have a variety of lilies I have some beautiful beautiful pink ones starting to blossom I have some yellow ones that grow on this one long stem we don't know why it's just one but I get blossoms out of that and it's just simply gorgeous when they come through I think my favorite color out of all the lilies are the dark pink ones that we get now these plants I would not recommend these if you have um, some issues because it can be hallucinogenic so I don't generally eat those myself because I have a strong sensitivity to alcohol even but so I don't because you know with the Lyme disease and stuff I'm trying to make sure that I don't acerbate any symptoms and if you're allergic to any nutrients that I listed talk to your physician because they may say no don't do this and they may not even know anything about it so you need to get some facts together and share it with them so even though I share this information and I've, I've researched like a dozen different websites I've also gone into my herb books and stuff and this is why I am feeling very comfortable consuming these and I haven't like I said I've been eating these for at least four years and as I've said overconsumption of anything can be bad um, I wanted to share something else really quickly with you and there they are so some of the health benefits and that's what I wanted to share it has brain strengthening and anti-aging function I'm not too worried about the anti-aging thing but brain boosting is good for like Alzheimer's and Lyme disease anything that you may be dealing with it can help in that area some other things it, it can help with lowering blood pressure prevent the and this is was something that was really kind of cool to read it can prevent intestinal cancer and if you have tumors it can help shrink them now I'm not saying that you should do this instead of working with your oncologist because I would never do that they have a job to do and you want to be well so work with them but there has been evidence to show that this can um, shrink those um, cancer tumors within the stomach 
It soothes the nerves to help you sleep. And that's why it helps with the insomnia that I spoke of. Now, like I said, don't eat too much of anything that's good for you. It's not going to help you. You can, no matter what you eat in life, you can get floating, you can gain weight, even a salad. You eat too much of that because you need more salad dressing or whatever it is, you can get bloating and you can gain weight. Now, so just have a mild salad. Now, I generally eat one salad a day, maybe at least five days a week. And it's a good size salad, like this one here. Let's see. It's not a huge plate, but it's, it's big enough. It's sufficient. Um, let's see, I think there was, okay, so what it tells you is soak in boiling water before eating. So like if you're going to do a stir fry and you want to eat these stamens and other parts of the plant. That's the only time that I boil them. The petals, I have never boiled, but you can still boil them if you're going to eat the whole flower. And like with drying them, just wash them wash them with warm water and then put them in your dehydrator mine dried on the overnight I put them in around 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning I woke up around 2 o'clock and they were dry so that's how I work them I think now there's a I'm going to read something okay it says some of the dried daylily products on the market have used I don't use this in my dried product the additive sodium metabisulfate over the standard amount in the processing. However, this additive will produce sulfur dioxide after processing. The excess sulfur dioxide residu residue in daylily will cause poisoning after it's consumed. See, now that's kind of the reason that I'm very careful about purchasing things over the counter. And if I can do it myself, that's why I do it. So know your source. That poison will cause dizzy, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, malaise, and more, and damages the gastric mucosa. In severe cases, it will poison the liver and kidney. So know what you're getting. Now, if you have GI diseases, or GI disease, don't eat these, even the petals. Now, fresh lily can have a little bit of a poison. That's why it's not advisable to eat the whole batch. I think I have maybe 20 flowers over there, and they do. They taste fabulous. One flower, just the petals, are safe to consume. Please do your research. Even though I've been eating them for four years or more, even though I consume them, like I didn't have any yesterday, I'm having some today, and I'll probably have another few of my salads over the next few weeks while the day lilies are out. It can be poisonous when you eat too much, and that's why I'm, when I talk about having too much of a good thing, that's why. It's not only a weight gain thing, it's also a toxic thing if you eat too much. Now, I'm not saying to eat this, but they are edible. Not all lilies are edible, so know that. You can, okay, so when you eat your lilies, you just need to cook it at a high temperature. So when I do a stir fry later, I will cook it. Um, first, I'm gonna boil it. That's what I do, you don't boil it for a few minutes and then put it in. So you're getting rid of all that toxic stuff. Um, and it's rich in nutrients and delicious, especially suitable for soups. Another reason to dehydrate so I can make soups later on. Now, some of this information came from a gentleman called Sam Pereira. He's a nutritional specialist. He's done a lot of studies in nutrition and how foods benefit us. Now there was another study, I'm trying to think if I have the source listed here. Um, I don't. 
I love how these taste. I love how they make a salad pop. Now, I know it seems kind of horrible for me to promote something, at the same time promote safety concerns. But you see, a lot of people will not share all those safety concerns. You'll see them eating this stuff without a care in the world, and maybe they'll put three or four flowers in their salad. That's a personal choice. But I like to be able to share information with people before I go and I put this in a salad that I will consume. You saw that I ate the petal. I just think it's important for consumers to know. Do I think they're safe? Re reminder, I'm not a doctor. I think they're safe. But I also think they're safe when you have them here and there. For one meal, or maybe four meals throughout the summer, I'm not too worried. And if it does calm nerves, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, washing my petals and then dehydrating to use throughout the year is good. Because one of the other benefits that I read is that it's antispasmodic, which um, those of you who understand about Lyme disease know that we get tremors. There's another part of my body that deals with spasms and stuff too. So it's just one of those things that I don't necessarily take it every day. I might put a pinch or two in my smoothie. Is it helping? I don't consume it every day. And I haven't really checked to see if the days that I have it, if it makes a difference. All I know is my good days are good days and my challenging days are challenging. So I wanted to bring this to you to share a little bit about the daylily. It's beautiful. You do not have to consume it. You can just enjoy it. But the flower does die off. You see the flower once today and it dies off and then the new ones come in because you'll see a lot of new pods that will be opening the next day and that's why they last for a few weeks. Almost like the lilacs. They don't last long enough. They don't have a scent like the lilacs, and oh my goodness, I dehydrated some lilacs. I opened that, and it's just like, oh, and there's no essential oils in it. It's just, oh, it's good, and I'll be using that for some um, things that I'm making. Now, I could make some of my soaps and throw in some daylily. You know, I'll chop it up and put a little bit, so let me do some of that. Will it have benefits in my soap? Not necessarily, but it'll give a little bit of color. And that's another thing with our flowers. Sometimes we can't eat them or we desire not to. You can also use them for the colors that you can put in some home remedies, cosmetic purposes, and stuff. And so that's another thing that you can. So the daylily is safe. I still need to research the pink lily. I just adore the pink lily and it stays in bloom for a while. And my yellow lilies last a while. They last a few days as the other ones are starting to come in and it's just, lilies are just beautiful. But again, know your lily, know what, how it's good, whether it's bad, and I will bring more information as I learn. So today is gorgeous. Looks like I have more roses. Um, I have knockout roses. And at night when the flower is in full bloom, um, and they take a day to get there, I will cut them off right at the point, like right in here, so that the next rose can come up. I do that with a lot of my herbs and roses now. The roses I'll use in soaps, I'll use in my vinegars, I will use in a variety of things. So instead of letting the roses or any of my flowers die to brown, I like to harvest them to use wherever I can. And roses, you can consume them. I like putting them in my soaps, I like putting them in my vinegar, and I like making like a rose skin toner. And, um, and I don't use a lot of cosmetics. I know it may sound like I do. I ended up tossing so many medications, so many, not medications, so many cosmetics 
because all the additives, I just don't like it. My skin is healthier without them. And, you know, I'm not taking bragging rights. I think there's a bit of my heritage, my DNA, um, that is good, that's in my skin. But I also think the salads I eat and the, the seeds, the nuts, there's a whole variety of foods, healthy foods, that we consume that help us to keep our skin healthy. Do I think putting things on our skin when they're dry is helpful? Absolutely. I like rose water. I like using different oils like jojoba oil. I like almond oil. Um, there's different oils out there. I like coconut oil because for me it, it just does better. Shea butter is good and I don't know if you saw my video, I'll link it below, that I made some shea deodorant. And that's that works, but I had to put some more coconut. I put fractionated coconut oil in it to kind of make it a little bit more usable, more creamy. And the reason I wanted to do that without the coconut oil, the regular, is so it wouldn't get too watery with just the shea butter. But I'm finding that the coconut oil was necessary. And that's why I play with some of the different things. I'm going to just stick with my coconut oil next time I make the deodorant. My husband's fine with it too. Um, so when he said something about his was a little dry, I just added some coconut oil and stirred it up. So now it's working. Now, fractionated coconut oil is great because, and I know I just went on a tangent, in the summertime because it's already in liquid form. And so you can use it and bring in the dry ingredients and make it melt. Well, my neighbor's starting to get a little noisy, and he does that once in a while. So I won't keep this much longer. But I wanted to share about what I knew about daylilies. And I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're eating well and keeping your body healthy. So I'm off to get inside, do some preserving and then later I'm out into the gardens. I hope you have a fabulous day and may God bless you.